So IUI stands for intrauterine insemination. And what that means is we usually time this procedure right at the time the female partner is ovulating. And so the husband will do a collection, usually in the comfort of his own home, bring it to our office, and we do this pr process called a sperm wash. One of my patients called it like an obstacle course or like the Olympics for sperm. So basically the sperm go through a filter, and then the best ones will make it through. The ones that are not modal or maybe morphologically abnormal will get stuck along the way, and then we get the best, highest quality sperm and then what we do is we take that, that sperm and put them in a little catheter, which then passes right through the cervix up to the top of the uterus, and it's basically like taking a flight most of the way there. Um, and so that's timed right at the time that the female partner is ovulating to try and give them a jump start where they need to be to fertilize that egg as it, as it comes into the fallopian tube. The most common patients that we have doing inseminations are people that have either mild or, male fa or moderate male factor infertility. So that would mean that they've done a workup and say on semen analysis either maybe the count's a little bit lower than it should be or the quality's a little bit low. That could either be that there's a lower percentage of normally shaped sperm than we like to see or maybe the motility's a little bit on the lower side. And in this situation, when you do that sperm wash, we're basically washing out the lower quality sperm and then getting the highest quality sperm, putting it in that little catheter and giving them that jump start to get up into the uterus so they're closer to the fallopian tubes where they need to be to fertilize the egg. And that is very successful. So you're basically treating the underlying problem. The other patients that we'll often do inseminations on are people that actually have unexplained infertility. And that is not an insignificant number of patients that we see, for better or for worse. So it, that can be actually about 15 to 20 patient percent of the patients that we treat have unexplained infertility where we've done the workup, the sperm quality seems to be good. And one of the main problems that we will encounter with unexplained infertility is that maybe there's a cervical factor issue where maybe the cervical mucus is either too thick or it's the wrong acidity and so basically we're just trying to get the sperm put it in that catheter and bypass those issues by getting them a little bit closer up to the fallopian tubes where they need to be to fertilize the egg and then I would say probably the third most common patients that we treat with inseminations are people that we think may have endometriosis so we'll often treat the female partner with medications like Clomidor Femara to boost the number of eggs that are dropping into the fallopian tubes and then time their ovulation again with these inseminations that are trying to get the sperm up through the cervix into the uterus because that's just going to get them pregnant faster. Everybody wants to know how many of these IUIs should they try. <laughs> that's one of the most common questions that we get and it is it is a great question, and I think it depends a little bit on each person's situation. In general, for somebody that has, again, milder male factor, moderate male factor infertility, or unexplained infertility, we'll easily have them try two or three cycles of inseminations. For the first two or three of these IUIs, the success rates will be about the same. After you get through three IUI cycles, you will see statistically that your success per cycle starts to go down a bit, and that's why usually after three cycles, we'll sit down, talk again, regroup, and discuss other options for treatment, whether that just means being a little bit more aggressive with other parts of that cycle of treatment, or often it's just more of a discussion of in vitro fertilization where nobody really wants to go to IVF, but on the other hand, success rates do get a lot higher when you get into IVF, and there are more parts of that process that we can control because we're assisting everything outside the body in a way that we just can't when we're doing inseminations and trying to do things a bit more naturally. So success rates with IUIs are good, but I think it requires a discussion a little bit about natural cycle success rates for fertile couples that are trying because a lot of people don't realize humans are not actually as fertile as you might think. So if you're trying for the first time, you just got married, and for the first six to 12 months, the chance of conceiving per cycle, believe it or not, is only about 20%. We call that cycle fecundability. A lot of people don't realize that humans are really not that fertile, but cumulatively over several months, it does add up. And I think people don't really think about it too much when, of course, they're just trying on their own and having more fun trying than when they're doing treatment cycles in here in the office, believe it or not, is not as much fun. <laughs> and so it does cumulatively work, but we're trying to bring people up to about that cycle chance when normal fertile couples are trying to 15 to 20% chance per cycle. 
I would say for the vast majority of our patients that we treat, they are able to conceive with things that are way less aggressive than IVF. Um, we've actually looked at it and statistically it's about 75% of our patients conceive with things other than IVF. And so usually it's great to just have people go through those three cycles and I do believe that the majority of patients are able to achieve success with that. Um, but I guess the silver lining is if that doesn't work and they have to go to something more, more aggressive, the success rates with IVF are actually exponentially higher than that even, so it gives them hope with that as well.